Hello, this week we are studying the concept of how populations change over time through an evolutionary process. And uh, one of the ways in which you can decide if a population is changing or evolving is by looking at the concept of microevolution. Microevolution can be defined as the changes in the frequencies of alleles for a specific gene locus or for several gene loci, or if you can also measure a change in the frequency of genotypes of a population. If the answer to the question is yes, then you can decide that microevolution is taking place and the population is changing. One would need to focus on the concept of a gene pool, and so I'm going to be using my pen to highlight some of the topics or um, I guess emphasize the concept of a gene pool in this case is uh, going to be the collection of all of the alleles that are present in uh, all of the individuals that are forming a population. And I told you before that you can look at this like a list, like an inventory of all of the specific genes and the alleles that are possible for a specific gene. If that gene pool changes, it could be because uh, there are new alleles that are being added or some alleles are being deleted or sometimes, like I said, just the frequency of alleles. Some alleles that used to be more frequent, later in time, they become less frequent. An allele that used to be rare, over time may become more, um, more frequent or more common within the population. In the illustration you see in this slide, you can see those uh, insects that are being fumigated in their gene pool. We're going to focus on a specific gene that has two alleles that convey either resistance to a pesticide or susceptibility, meaning that those bugs with that specific gene are going to be easy targets for the pesticide to destroy it. So following fumigation, we can see what happens. All of these beetles that have a, an allele here, the allele is shown with a green color indicating the susceptibility or uh, I guess being vulnerable to the pesticide, those beetles die as a consequence of being fumigated. And the only one that is surviving is going to be the one that has an allele. Here it is shown with a red color. And that is an allele that provides the insect with perhaps the ability to break down the chemicals of the pesticide that is uh, used in this type of fumigation. What happens if you have a field with this type of beetles? It only takes a small handful of them for finding a mate, reproducing, and what you will see in the next generation is that one allele is going to be the one that is going to be the most frequent. Interestingly, this allele we have seen before here represented with a red color in the previous generation, uh, it was one that it was rare. It was only a very few number of these uh, insects, beetles, bugs, whatever you want to call them, that have that allele that gave them that resistance, the strength to withstand the application of a pesticide. So in this case, what has changed is the frequency of alleles. The allele that was less common becomes the most common, and the allele that used to be the most common now could have disappeared or perhaps it's just going to be found in a very small number of individuals. Uh, it took uh, two people to come together with a mathematical way of exploring how a population may be changing within their gene pool or the frequencies of alleles within the gene, gene pool may be changing. Uh, Hardy and Weinberg proposed a principle that said that if a population is a genetic equilibrium, and by genetic equilibrium means that nothing is changing. The frequencies of alleles remain the same generation after generation, and also that the frequencies of genotypes are remaining the same generation after generation. And so what they said is that if this is true, if these kinds of frequencies are remaining the same, then the population would be a genetic equilibrium and the population will not be evolving. However, the slightest change in the frequencies of alleles or the frequency of genotypes for a specific locus in a population, then you can conclude that the population is going to be evolving and uh, going through evolutionary change. So what we need to understand here for this topic is how to calculate 
frequencies of alleles. And fortunately, you have already learned in uh, Bio 211 about Mendelian inheritance and how we can assign uh, names for alleles, symbols for alleles. And uh, what we want to remember here, some uh, basic concepts. One of those is going to be that for a specific locus, a gene locus, uh, for many of those genes we have in humans, there's going to be two alleles. And so let's consider a population, and I'm going to be trying to make some annotations on this slide, and I'm hoping you can see them. If the population size is 10 individuals, and we're going to be focusing on one gene only, and this gene has two alleles, two forms for that specific gene, we can answer the question, well, what will be the total number of alleles for that specific gene in, for the population total? And so each individual, remember each of the 10 has two alleles, one inherited from each parent. So what we have to do is for the number of alleles, the total, I should say, number of alleles present in the population for this one specific gene locus, all we have to do is multiply the 10 individuals times two because each carries two alleles and the total number is going to be 20. There's going to be 20 alleles for a particular gene of interest on a study that you may be performing. So, one other detail that you want to remember is that in terms of genotypes for a specific gene, there can be organisms that are going to be homozygous dominant, meaning that they carry two copies of the dominant allele. There are going to be also those that are going to be homozygous recessive, those that carry two copies of the recessive allele. And we also have the heterozygotes. And the heterozygotes are particular here because they have one of each of the two alleles. They carry one dominant and one recessive. It will be easier to understand this process of calculating allele frequencies and genotype frequencies if we pay attention to a specific example. And so take a look at this one here. Consider that we have a population of 500 plants like those snapdragons we talked about before in Bio211. With snapdragons, red is not completely dominant over white, and white is not completely dominant over red. So it's one of those cases of incomplete dominance, where if you cross a red flower plant with a white flower plant, the hybrids, the offspring, which will be actually heterozygotes, are going to show pink flowers. And so in this population of 500 plants, you can see that there's going to be 320 that are producing red flowers. 160 that produce pink flowers. 20 only are producing white flowers. And so we're given this data. This is the result, let's imagine, the result of a survey. Someone going to a garden, to a field, finding 500 plants and counting how many of those produce red flowers, how many produce white flowers, how many produce pink flowers. And we come up with these numbers now. With this data, we can actually go ahead and calculate the allele frequencies. How can we do it? Let's begin with the red allele. The red allele, uh, we can come up with the total by beginning to look at those individuals that are homozygous dominant. I'm, I shouldn't say homozygous dominant. I just should say homozygous for the red allele. And uh, so they are going to carry two red alleles. We have 320 of these plants and each has two red alleles, what we have to do right now is multiply 320 times two. And that's what we have here in our initial step in calculating the frequency of red alleles. But if you look at this population, there's going to be another type of individual that also has red alleles. Who is it? Yes, you got it. It's going to be those with pink flowers because those plants with pink flowers each carries one red allele. Remember that the pink flower plants are heterozygotes, so they have a red and they have a white allele. 
how many of these pink flowers we have. We have 160. Each only carries one red allele, so we just have to add that to the previous um, number we had for the uh, red allele. So 320 times two, that is going to be 640, and 640 plus 160 is going to give us a total number of 800 red alleles present among this population of 500 plants. We can use the same logic for calculating the white alleles. We only have 20 plants that are producing white flowers. Each of these are going to have two of the white color alleles. So what we do is again, take the 20, multiply it times two, each carries two white alleles. 20 times two is going to be 40, but remember that there is another type of member for this population that has white alleles, and that's going to be again, our heterozygotes, the plants with pink flowers. They happen to carry each one white allele. And so when we do the 20 times two, which is 40 plus the 160, we're going to end up with a total of 200 white alleles in the population. Then what we have to do is simply add the 800 plus the 200, and that is going to be a total of 1,000 alleles responsible for flower color in a population of plants. Like I said, this could be the case of the snapdragons. Let's try to remember another detail I mentioned previously. If you have a population number of individuals, the total number of alleles is going to be that population number times two. We have 500 plants. Each has two alleles for flower color. 500 times two, oh look, we end up with that number we anticipated, 1,000 alleles. There's nothing here too confusing. Please keep it simple. Don't um, overanalyze things. And so as part of this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium concept, we can come up with an equation and we can say that the sum of the alleles uh, is going to, here's so it's going to be the, the frequency of alleles. Let's say that red, oops, red is going to be uh, represented by the letter P and white is going to be represented by the letter Q. Now I'm using these letters, these symbols, because I'm about to come up with an equation that is going to be dealing with uh, allele frequencies and probabilities. And so what we can say is this, lowercase p plus Q should equal one. That is what I wanna show you next. How can we come up with this equation showing you the um, frequencies of alleles? So right now we have totals of alleles. We have 800 total red alleles, 200 total white alleles for a grand total of 1,000 alleles altogether uh, for the trade of flower color. So how can we convert these numbers to frequencies? All we have to do is simply divide 800 by the grand total of 1,000 and we're going to end up with 0 0.8. Let's take a look at the white alleles. How can we come up with the frequency of white alleles? is going to be the total number of white alleles, which is 200, divided by 1,000, the grand total for the alleles present in the population for flower color. So 200 divided by 1,000 is going to be 0 0.2. And I said, we're going to use this frequency and, and, and represent this frequency with the lowercase p letter, and this one going to be representing with the lowercase q letter, and then we can form our Hardy-Weinberg equation for allele frequencies. So Hardy-Weinberg allele frequency equation. Remember what I just showed you? I think you do. P plus Q equals one. Will that hold true for this example? Absolutely. If we do 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2, that is going to be exactly equal one. And so what does this tell us? And I'll tell you simply, it's giving us a starting point. We're looking at a population of plants at a specific moment in time. And at this moment, 
we have ideal frequencies 0.8 for red, 0.2 for white. If we were to survey the same population of plants again next year, and we find out that P hasn't changed, P continues to be 0.8, and Q continues to be 0.2, we can state that the next time we survey the population and we find the same frequency, that population is not changing. It is not evolving. And the population will be at equilibrium. We can also take a look at changes in genotype frequencies. From our data about um, allele frequencies, we can also predict what will be the genotype frequencies. Remember that uh, P, representing the frequency of red alleles, is 0 0.8, and that Q, the symbol we use for representing the frequency of white alleles, is going to be 0 0.2. So, what will be the predicted frequency of homozygous uh, individuals for the red allele? It's like having a cap, uh, I'm sorry, one of these uh, P and another P allele. P represents a frequency for red allele. So it's going to be 0 0.8, the value we have for P, multiplied by itself is like 0 0.8 squared. And we're going to end up with 0 0.64. The 0 0.64 is going to be a frequency of a particular genotype. What genotype? The red genotype, homozygous red genotype. What else can we have on the population? In a population, we can also have the heterozygotes. Now, heterozygotes could be of two different ways. They could be C capital R, C lowercase r, or they, I'm sorry, we're using uh, W for white. Or they could also be C, W, and C, R. There are two ways a plant can be a heterozygote. Therefore, those that have a P and a Q, there's going to be two possible ways. Um, and I don't want to do this uh, notation right now. I want to be able to erase this, but how can I erase? Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a moment so that I can make my erasure. Okay, so no look with the erasing, so I'm just gonna scribble this. And uh, what I wanted to have here is the number that corresponds to the heterozygotes to PQ is going to be two, it's going to be multiplying the P times the Q. And so what we want to do is multiply this first. Uh, 0.8 times 0.2 is going to be 0.16. And when you multiply that times two, it's going to be 0.32. Having issues here with my writing, and this is getting kind of messy, and I apologize for that. One thing I can promise you is that we're also going to spend time in class uh, exploring this equation further. Okay, so what is a 0.32? That is going to be the frequency for the heterozygote genotype, those that are going to have a white allele and a red allele. What about the plants that are going to be uh, homozygous for the white allele? Oops, don't go away. Those, we have uh, an allele frequency of 0 0.2, just for one white allele. Plants with the white flowers have two of those white alleles. So it's going to be like multiplying the 0 0.2 times 2. That's the same as 0 0.2 squared. And the value is going to be 0 0.04. And so if you add these three numbers, 0.64, plus 0.32 plus 0.04, you're going to end up exactly with one. And so what this is telling us is that we have also an equation for the frequency of genotypes using the Hardy-Weinberg way of thinking. And that is going to be P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared 
equals one. And this equation is exactly what we have demonstrated over here, where 0.64 is p squared, 0.32 is 2pq, 0 0.04 is going to be q squared. And so what does it tell us in conclusion for this video, which is getting kind of long, is that uh, if the frequency of these genotypes we have right now, this is a moment in time, if we were to survey the same population of plants a year from now, when we come up with the same frequencies of genotypes, the so ones we have identified, then you can conclude the population is not changing, there's no microevolution happening, and the population will be at equilibrium. That's all for now. I'll follow up with another video on uh, the causes for microevolution.